Hello, 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 and this is the Common Constitutionalist Weekly Podcast, and I am, as I always am, the Common Constitutionalist. Sometimes I fear, sometimes I feel more constitutionalist than others, but I am always the Common Constitutionalist, and today is an historic podcast. Yes, historic in nature. It ain't, uh, it ain't, (laughs) it probably won't be anything particularly special but it sure is bloody historic. And the reason why it's historic is that Barack, Hussein, Milhouse, Benito, Stalin, Obama uh, is leaving office. And this is the final podcast before he does so. Now, we all know he ain't going anywhere, but at least he's leaving office. So regardless of what happens after this, at least we could say <laughs> he's leaving office. So Happy days are here again, baby. And to celebrate that momentous and happy event, this momentous and happy event, we are going to go through an article from the Fiscal Times uh, praising Barack Obama and uh, how wonderful, (laughs) wonderful his presidency has been. And we'll take a look back at some of the fabulousness of the Obama presidency, and we'll see what See what else. Uh, see what else is on the docket. I might get to a uh, an article about the uh, the fact that uh, um, on his way out the door once again, Obama has uh, has shifted gears and has changed the uh, the immigration rules for Cuban immigrants now. Uh, and we'll discuss. Maybe if I even get to it, we'll discuss that. But uh, happy days are here again. Uh, Barack Obama is le- well no he's le- he's leaving office but we all know he ain't going nowhere but happy day you are listening to the common constitutionalist broadcasting from an undisclosed location Free from the prying eyes of establishment black helicopters. All righty then. So, I'm doing this actually, uh, uh, I'm doing this, I usually do these things on, on Saturday night and uh, for release Sunday morning. I don't wake up at four o'clock or five o'clock on Sunday morning and do these things. So I do the podcast Saturday night, but I'm doing this one early because uh, the Patriots are on tonight and I'm going over to my uh, to my friend's house and we're all getting together as we always do and watch the Patriots game. And uh, hopefully it will go as as advertised where the Patriots crush the Houston Texans as they should and they go on and uh, to the next round. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, at any rate, um, this article from the Fiscal Times for the uh, momentous podcast, the last podcast before Obama leaves office and moves down the street to his digs at the uh, World Wildlife Federation that is uh, World Wildlife Fund, excuse me, that is 1.1 miles away from the White House. Gee, wonder why he did that. But at any rate. Here we go, and uh, well, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll warn you ahead of time. You've got to. You're going to have to choke back some tears as you listen to the Fiscal Times um, ramble on about how fabulous Ob- Obama was. It's just, it's uh, well, at least it ain't the Huffington Post because they're blubbering like a bunch of babies. But at any rate, here we go. When Barack Obama was sworn in as President of the United States in 2009. He put his hand on a Bible, Um, (laughs) I'm going to leave that one alone, and repeated the oath of office being clumsily administrated by Chief uh, Justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts. When he pulled back his hand, he was holding what might charitably be described as a bag of elephant dung left for him by his good-natured but bumbling predecessor, George W. Bush. Yes, George W. Bush, his bumbling, <laughs> that's, a, 
Hey, that's a good one. Bumbling predecessor. I suppose uh, the Donald might be thinking the exact same thing. Although, Brock wasn't exactly bumbling. He knew exactly, he told us exactly what he was going to do going in, and by gum, that's what he did. Michelle told us he was going to transform America, and uh, Barack said that this is what he wanted to do, and that's what he did, almost without exception. Frankly, about the only thing he didn't pull off was closing up Gitmo permanently. Um, but that's, you know, that uh, whatever, we'll leave that one alone too. All right, so anyway, to continue with the Fiscal Times article, among the contents of that sack, yeah, this the sack of elephant dung, yes, were two wars in far off lands, in parentheses they put, one of which was clearly unnecessary, and in they're absolutely right. It was, it turns out, unnecessary. Um, you know, the whole weapons of mass destruction, everything. You know, the interesting thing is, is as an aside, as we, here we go again with the uh, with the going off topic. Everybody said that there were weapons of mass destruction in uh, in Iraq, and frankly, they no one ever, they did find them. They found lots of them. They were old from the 80s and whatnot, um, from their wars with Iran, but they still were weapons. Of, they were WMDs stored away, and they were ancient from the 80s, but they were still there, and they and some of them were still uh, still effective. They could still be used. So it's not like they didn't find tons and tons and tons of weapons of mass destruction uh, from Hussein, uh, Saddam Hussein, not Barack Hussein. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, baby. Um, but, uh, but they did find them, but that's beside the point. We still, I, I agree with Trump, we shouldn't have gone into Iraq. We should have, um, he could have been held at bay, the same as the rest of the other dictators, Unfortunately, this was the, uh, and I, the, well, you know what, we're not even going to get into the fact that, you know, Bush's uh, theory of cutting off the head of the snake, surrounding him, taking Afghanistan, taking Iraq, and that would, that would put the pressure on Iran and everything backfired and whatever. So anyway, moving on, shall we? Hey, you start digressing, and it just you know, I end up going off on these tangents and never get back to the subject at hand, which is the last po- <laughs> last podcast of oh the Obama president array. All right, let's begin again here. Among the contents of the sack of elephant dung were two wars in far off lands, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression a health care system that left a significant share of the public without coverage, EGAD. Man, I, I mean, I could just go off on every one of these bloody things, whatever. A broadening gulf between the haves and the have-nots that put a laser focus on America's income inequality. A housing crisis that was foreclosing the dream of home ownership for millions of Americans the need to bail out the big banks that brought the economy to the brink by greedy, reckless behavior and the impending demise of the fabled U.S. auto industry. Holy crap, what a mess he was left, huh? And without getting into too much detail, you could blame every single one of those on government. Every, not you could, you should, and you will, if you thought about it, blame every single one of the problems on government. It ain't Bush's government. It's not Obama's government. It's just federal government. Uh, the founders warned us of this a gazillion years ago. Um, and they, the, this is, the nightmare has come true. Every single one of these things, um, health care system uh, left without significant, people without significant coverage. That's because the uh, the government's picking winners and losers in the health care system. A broadening gulf between the haves and the have-not. Crony corporatism, crony capitalism. It's not capitalism. It has nothing to do with capitalism. It's crony corporatism. A housing crisis that's foreclosing on the dream ho- dream of home ownership. Of course, that was caused by the, the Democrats, uh, Jimmy Carter's want, to put uh, minorities into homes that they can't afford, but it doesn't matter. 
the need to bail out big banks. Well, big banks were forced to loan people who couldn't pay mortgages back by the millions, and that uh, equated to uh, hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars in, in unwanted, unneeded debt that they didn't have to incur except for the government. Um, and the demise of the fabled auto industry, the auto industry, that's their, well, actually, I guess that's, they, that's kind of their own fault um, doing what they did because basically the uh, U.S. auto industry just became the U.S. Um, health insurance industry that just happened to make, uh, auto, to make autos. So basically, that's all it was. Let's go on, shall we? Eight years later, Obama, <laughs> this is so good. Well, it's uh, whatever. Eight years later, Obama hands his successor the imperfect closure of one war in far-off lands and a failed closure of another. Yes, indeedy. A humanitarian crisis spilling out of Syria. Okay. An insanely bloodthirsty band of radical Islamic terrorists. Uh, you know what? I'll give him kudos for at least calling them radical, radical Islamic terrorists. Um uh, because very many, uh, very few leftists will do that, at least. The terrorists are on the run, but not defeated. That's true. And they're on the run all over Europe, and they'll be here soon, too. Trust me. A health system that is troubled, but still providing medical care for upwards of 10 million citizens. Well, I, really? 10 million citizens? Why is it that if, it's they they claim that the health care is uh obamacare is providing medical care for upwards of 10 million citizens yet if we if the uh the house and senate and uh president elect trump signs obamacare out of law they, they get rid of obamacare 20 million people are going to lose their coverage yet this one says that they're only providing coverage for up to upwards of 10 million citizens uh, yet we're going to lose coverage for $20 million. You do the math, uh, because I can't. That must be the new math, because I can't figure it out. They say this, he is, uh, he has left his, uh, he has left his, uh, Trump, uh, with a housing market well on its way to full recovery. <laughs> Big banks not just stabilized, but for the most part thriving. Yes, <laughs> they certainly are, and I wonder why that is. And I wonder if this was a Republican presidency that the press wouldn't be bemoaning the fact that big banks were thriving. But yet they're, that this is a good thing, evidently. A robust auto industry with an exciting future and a stock market that has seen the Dow Industrial Average rise from over just over 8,000 on the day he was inaugurated in 2009 to just under 20,000 today. Now, I just, is it just me or don't leftists hate Wall Street? I mean, you know, this, that was, wasn't that what the Occupy Wall Street movement was, uh, was Wall Street? I mean, the big banks and, and fat cats and all this other robber barons and all this other crap. But yet, uh, under Obama, this is supposed to be a good thing. The fact that the, the haves, excuse me, we're talking about the haves, the haves nots, and the fact that Wall Street is fabulous now. Uh, well, there's there's a serious disconnect there that if you think about it, it's ridiculous. But again, if you're a leftist, a liberal, you don't think about these things. It's just pure emotion. And anything under Obama, good. Anything not under Obama, bad. And uh, look at the time. Uh, we need to take a break because I've been droning on for a while here. So I'll be right back. You're listening to The Common Constitutionalist. Let the truth be known. Okay, welcome back. And now the uh, now they're going to make a few excuses for the fact that Obama's presidency wasn't all that it was uh, advertised. Well, actually, I guess if you think about it, uh, from our standpoint, it kind of was all that it was advertised, but I already went through that. They write, President Obama may not have been forceful enough in concluding the foreign adventures of Bush and his and his taciturn handler, a dick, the evil uh, Darth Vader Cheney. They didn't put that, but I uh, everybody knows that Darth, uh, that Darth Vader, if you took the mask off, is really Dick Cheney. 
He may have made grave mistakes in not carrying through on threats to the gory regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria and in letting Libya erupt into chaos. Yes, he may have done all these really stupid things, but he's still a great guy. Yeah, okay, he's, he's a fabulous president. Woohoo. He may not have done he may not have done enough fast enough to shut down ISIS, or he may have done absolutely zero. Uh, but perhaps, but perhaps we've forgotten how weary America was of ground wars overseas that were sending stretchers of maimed warriors home with lives shattered with no clear reason. Well, I absolutely 100% agree with that because most of the crap that we're involved in over there is just that crap it has no we have no purpose being over there we there's no strategic uh, there's no uh, strategy for that there's no exit strategy uh, there was no strategy going in uh, other than regime change which is a just it's folly from the start so I I, I, I absolutely agree with them on that when they, in that uh, standpoint anyway they uh, they continue Oh, what Obama did domestically, uh, other than ruin the country almost, uh, almost completely, though, was make America much greater on his watch than he was than it was when he took charge. Ah, yes, but his cool, steady hand is not what we will miss most. You brother, what we will. <laughs> Gee whiz, this is really yuck. yuck. What we will miss most is what Obama and his first lady restored to the White House, a level of dignity, grace, and style not seen since another young American president, however briefly, uh, over, the Camel, over the Camelot years. Um, yeah, so he's the next JFK. He's the black JFK. Okay, then, there you go. And uh, he's uh, full of style and grace, and uh, Michelle was fabulous. And I, 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 you know, as far as, as far as that's concerned, I suppose that's correct. They go on and say that, um, yes, Ronald and Nancy Reagan had the dignity, grace, and style befitting the highest office in the land, but their example and that of their successors, the Bushes, stay out the Bushes, were more, uh, were, uh, more formal, less relatable. Uh, yeah, Reagan. Reagan was less relatable and beloved, or and less beloved than Obama. Right. Yeah. That's why. What was it? A hundred thousand, a hundred and five thousand people minimum lined his funeral procession in, uh, route in uh, 2004, and it was viewed by like 36 million people on TV. Yeah, that's that's because. Uh, Reagan was less beloved and less relatable than Barack Milhouse or Obama. Give me a freaking break. You couldn't get a more relatable president than President Reagan. And that's why people loved him. And that's why he was so successful. Because he was so darn relatable. Just ridiculous. And here is the kicker. This is where it all gets really, really good. And unlike all of those, unlike all of those presidencies, the Obamas have had no major scandals, no squalid behavior. No. May, can I repeat? Shall I repeat? No major scandals, no squalid behavior. I don't know what they mean by squalid behavior, and I don't know what they classify as a major scandal, but... This is this has been one scandal after another in the Obama presidency, just like every other Democrat president, frankly. So I'm um, going to take one more quick break here, and then I will get into the fact that the Obamas have had no major scandals and no squalid behavior. Be right back. You're listening to The Common Constitutionalist. Let the truth be known. All right. Now, um, without getting into detail on these, because I don't have a week and a half to get into the detail on every single one of them, let me just tick off a few dozen. Uh, <laughs> let me just tick off some of the. Not I, I don't know what I don't know what would anyone classify as a major scandal or not. I have no idea, but these are scandalous. Now, okay, let's see. How about IRS targeting citizens? targeting conservative groups 
targeting citizens. Anything ever happened to those people? Nope, nothing. How about the EPA? Their, their, their goal in life, the, the Obama EPA under, what's her name, McCarthy, I guess it was, or is, EPA shutting down American energy. They've practically coal, uh, killed the coal uh, industry. They put almost everything else off limits. The only reason why we have America energy, American energy, the only reason why it thrived at all is because it's on state and private lands. Anything that the federal government got involved with basically killed uh, fossil fuels in this country. So that's another scandal. How about Fast and Furious? The, the fact that no one went to prison uh, on that one is just, it's just unconscionable. The fact that Eric Holder is still walking around out there. As a matter of fact, he just got a new job with the state of California. Uh, basically, his his entire existence is, existence is going to be to sue the federal government on the state of California's behalf. Just lawsuit after lawsuit, and that's what this smarmy uh, slip and fall attorney is going to be. Is that's exactly what he's going to be? Is he's going to be California's official slip and fall lawyer? where he should have been perp-walked in shackles to the, to the le- nearest federal penitentiary. How about the BLM standoff? Remember, Bureau of Land Management standoff? Yep, how about that one? No, that wasn't scandalous at all. How about Homeland Security and their treatment of, uh, you know, their treatment of uh, the uh, policy, illegal immigration, immigration policy on the whole? How about that? That's not scandalous? No, of course not. How about the a VA death list? How about that? That's not scandalous at all. How about the entire VA health system? No, that's of course, that's not a scandal at all. How about the Ara- Iranian nuke deal? No, of course not. No scandal there, nothing. How about the ransom payments to Iran? No, nothing, nothing to see here. Move along, nothing to see here. How about spying on journalists? No, nothing to see there either. Federalizing police force, Chicago, here we go. You're next, man. Uh, welcome to it, Rahm Emanuel. Your, uh, your police force is going to be federalized. I'm sure you won't have a problem with it, but I guarantee you the Chicago Police Department will, and I guarantee you the people of Chicago will. Uh, they're in bad enough shape as it is. Let's see. What, else, what other no major scandals, no squalid behavior in the uh, Obama administration uh, because Obama and his wife and his whole cabinet are filled with dignity, grace, and style? Let's see, where did I leave off here? Uh, how about you know, illegal interfer- illegally interfering with a foreign election? Remember that? Trying to, uh, to oust Netanyahu, uh, they sending people over that used to work for Obama's campaign, um, financing them to upend um, and uh, oust Bibi Netanyahu, foreign election? No, that's not scandalous. How about Benghazi and the whole Benghazi cover-up? No, that's not a major scandal. Of course not. How about the, the trillion-dollar stimulus that didn't stimulate anything other than the, the unions and other Obama friends? That did, Yeah, that's not a scandal at all. Where else? Let's see where else here. Um, how about Ob- the Obamacare lie after lie after lie? Every time somebody opened their mouth about how Obamacare was great, it was a bloody lie. It was just one lie after the other. How about NSA spying? No, that's not a scandal. How about Solyndra and Solyndra and all the other green energy scams, giving away uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to these green energy crap holes? No, that's not scandalous. How about emptying Gitmo at any cost, despite the fact that many of these terrorists have returned to terrorism and have actually killed Americans? But there's nothing to see here. No, of course not. How about the EPA poisoning the Colorado River? Remember that? They went in, seized a mine. I can't remember what the key mine or something like that. And, um, and ended up digging, uh, digging up something. I can't remember. And ended up spilling millions and millions of gallons of toxic, toxic uh, mine waste that was stored uh, effect- effectively and efficiently. And uh, they went in there, ruined everything. They poisoned the Colorado River. No, that's not a scandal. Of course not. Not federal government. They're, they're fabulous. The uh, the GSA scandal, the Secret Service scandal. Remember that? Uh, prostitutes and booze and drugs and whatever. 
and creating a total and complete vacuum in the Middle East. Egypt, Libya, Iraq, Syria, the whole thing is a complete disaster and it's mostly due to this president. Some had to do with uh, what Bush left behind agreed mostly due to this president. But in a way, um, the Fiscal Times is kind of right because they, these, they, they said, if you read this thing, and I am which I'm going to do, unlike all those other presidencies, the Obamas have had no major scandals, no squalid behavior. And, he, and they're, they're kind of right. Because as a good community organizer, as a good community agitator, which is actually what he, what he really is, is a community agitator, um, Barack knows, oh, Barack knows that he's got to change America. Barack knows that you don't attach your name directly to the multitude of these scandals. You let, you let, you sit in the background and you, you control the puppet strings and you let everyone else do the dirty work for you so they have their name attached to it, all right? So that way, um, because you've got a, a press that loves you and, and the Democrats love you and they'll cover up any, any uh, malfeasance and misdoings from you directly, they can, uh, they'll can they divert attention away from you so your fingerprints are never put on these scandals. These I don't know how many dozen I just went through but every single one of them is a legit scandal. And most of them, if you were in the private sector, would, would land you in the clink for sure. And no doubt, they'd throw away the key in most cases. But because you've got a sycophantic press and you've got the Democrats that love you, despite the fact that you ruined their party, basically, for a long time coming, um, you're able to keep your fingerprints off of almost all of these scandals. That's it, other than Obamacare, because it's named after you. But all these other things, you were just at an arm's length, and that's why you're personally popular still. Your policies, everybody hates your policies, and everybody thinks that the country was, was in the crapper for a long time, um, where morale was basically, at the, it tanked. Uh, consumer confidence was, was also in the crapper. But yet people liked you, and this is the reason why, because as a good community organizer, you knew to keep a hands-off, to, to just play behind the scenes, you hire the right people, um, all these other uh, sycophantic leftists, and you just have them go out and do what they do because they're all all these minds think alike, and that's that's what basically what they do. And so they're they're right. Your Obama was able to keep arm's length to all these major scandals, and just sit back as as if he's observing something. Um, and saying, geez, uh, you know, what, what happened here? What happened there? Well, he's the cause of all of this crap, of virtually everything. And that, as it were, is that. I was going to try to get to a uh, thing by Buck Sexton at the Blaze where they changed the, um, the Obamas. On, again, once on the way out the door, they changed the policy. It uh, was the wet foot, dry foot policy where basically Cuban immigrants, if they get here, they get to stay here. Uh, that was um, I can't was established in the 90s by Clinton, I think, and he's changed that policy, completely flipped it around. That basically uh, all Cuban immigrants from now on uh, will be deported if they're if they're caught in this country. If they just after they land, that the policy is completely shifted 180 degrees. And in my opinion, the reason is is that um, Cuban immigrants, unlike other Hispanic immigrants. Um, vote uh, uh, overwhelmingly, not overwhelming, but, but, but a majority of Cuban immigrants vote for uh, vote Republican. If they all voted Democrat, if they were all if they were all leftists like the Mexicans and the Central and South Americans and whatnot, that which <clears throat> which will invariably vote for Democrats, Obama would continue with this policy. And also, this is a thank you to Raul Castro and the Castro regime to where basically, uh, Castro said, uh, yeah, we'll, t we'll take them all back. Don't worry, we send them back. Uh, usually countries say, no, we, we don't want them. Um, they left, uh, do, you can't say, we don't want them back. Send them somewhere else, we don't want them back. But the Castros, yep, yeah, yeah, bring them on back, no problem, we'll take them. And then they'll put them in the, the nearest gulag, uh, for lock them away for a while, whatever, I don't know. So that's all I've got for today. Jeez, um, uh, you know, I, it's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to come on and say, yeah, go Patriots. But I have no idea. 
uh, because this is I'm, I'm broadcasting this after the Patriots game Sunday morning, but I'm doing this uh, Saturday morning actually uh, because I got to get uh, got to get things going, bringing some stuff over to uh, to my friend's house for the game, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, it goes well. But uh, I'll, y'all have a balance, a great balance of the weekend, and we'll talk to you next week uh, at the, uh, the kickoff of the Trump administration. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm out of here. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Common Constitutionalist Weekly Podcast.